Hi, I'm Marion Landry, Technical Marketing Manager with Autodesk. To create my tips and tricks, I've often used the RAM player to compare media, and I've been asked how I do that. I'm going to show you in this tips and tricks. So let's start with the rendering window, which you might be familiar with. First of all, you can clone an image and keep it and re-render and use that as a comparison. So this is only within the software. And once the software is closed, you're actually losing the clone unless you save them. Then you can choose to copy the rendered image and paste it in any other document, such as a Word document or a email window. Then you can choose to save the image and you most likely are aware of that and keep the image for further references by clicking the little icon and saving it most likely in your render outputs uh, folder within your project folder. Then there's the RAM player option, which offer actually two channel, which will allow you to compare images. Go under the rendering menu and the last item is compare media in RAM player. Here you will be able to load automatically your uh, rendered image by clicking this small button and you'll see here that the rendered image has been loaded in the A channel because there are two channel, channel A and B. And of course, I will need another image in order to run a comparison. So what I'm going to do is to load the material in my scene, change few of the material, re-render this image, and I will compare it in the B channel of the RAM player. So once my render is completed, I can again load it in my RAM player. So I'm going to maximize my RAM player to have access to it again. And you'll notice that now I am loading my, uh, the last rendered image in the channel B of the RAM player. So I have both channel loaded. And as I'm loading my second image, I have access to a small arrow and I can basically wipe this arrow across to reveal either channel A or channel B, which are two different rendered images and I can easily compare these two images side by side, which is a great option within the software. Now I can choose to load any images I want that I have rendered previously. So you can basically decide to load any previously rendered image or composite image, whichever type of image. First of all, it will show you the image resolution, which you can display in the original resolution or reduce the size. So I'm going to go at 1280 for this particular example. So you can see that I could keep the aspect ratio and automatically the RAM player window get adjusted to the size of the image that I am loading. So now I have a different image in my channel A and I'm going to load a different image in my channel B. Of course, to compare the images, it's probably easier if you load them at a um, same size. So when you wipe across, you actually have the same size window. And now you see, I can actually compare or show my client or the my coworker two different images that I'm working on and help them decide which one they prefer. Now, important to know the RAM player will allow you to load image sequences. So if you are rendering uh, I image sequences for your video and you haven't compiled them in a video or a QuickTime movie yet, you'll be able to see them in the RAM player as played at 30 or 24 frames per second. Here I have an image sequence, which I will load starting at frame zero. It will recognize it as a sequence. It's going to ask me if I want to load all the frames. So I can choose which frame I'm loading. I could choose the format that I'm loading it at. And you'll see that it's loading each images that I've asked. I'm actually asking to load the complete sequence, which is 151 frame. So as it is a loading the image sequence, you can see it happening. And once it's finished, I basically can can wipe across and again I still have access to both of my channel they could both be image sequence or still images and here my channel B I can press play on the playback uh, option on the top of my RAM player and I could see uh, my image sequence being played at 30 frame a second I could also choose the frame rates uh, if I want a slower uh, frame rate for my image sequence so it's a good way to look at an image sequence before it's compatible in a video in a video if you want to check that your raw images have been rendered perfectly and there's no glitches before you compile it in a, in a video the RAM player is also a good option to consider so I strongly encourage you to explore with the RAM player great tool to compare media 
great tool to see image sequences before they are turned into video. And it's a great tool to talk about actually perhaps maybe different variation of your design or different camera angle that you're working on for your project.